I just found out why my wedding started late and I love my husband more because of it. My husband, John Ibukig M26, and I F24, just returned from our week-long honeymoon two weeks ago. We call my husband Ibuki because he resembles the character from the MCU movies. My Bucky is a bit more yummy. Yesterday was the first time we had dinner with his family since the wedding. My sister-in-law F20 is my favorite person besides my husband, which is why she was my maid of honor. She took me aside and told me what happened behind the scenes at my wedding. A bit of background first. My mother-in-law, F48, never liked me, and she didn't hide it from me, though she did hide it from her son. This started from the moment we began dating. She would play nice in front of him but make nasty comments as soon as he was out of sight. At first, I didn't say anything to Bucky, hoping that, in time, his mother would warm up to me. But it never stopped. Eventually, I had enough and started telling Bucky. Bucky spoke with his mother, but she claimed I was misunderstanding her. She didn't stop, she just became subtler, saying things that could be interpreted in multiple ways. I don't blame Bucky, he did believe me, but he also believed his mother when she said she meant something else. When Bucky proposed, I thought that would be the end of it, but she only got sneakier. I almost called off the wedding because I couldn't handle it anymore. We had arguments, and it was frustrating. Bucky always believed me but didn't believe it was his mother's intent to be hurtful. Somehow we got through it and started planning the wedding. My sister-in-law helped with the wedding planning and preparations, and because my mother-in-law was minimally involved, everything was perfect. From my perspective, everything went as planned on the wedding day, though we started a bit later. Bucky told me it couldn't be avoided because something important came up last minute. I assumed it was work-related so I didn't ask. But now I've heard from my sister-in-law what actually happened. I was in the bridal suite, so I didn't see or hear any of this. My mother-in-law arrived at the venue wearing white. When Bucky found out, he asked my sister-in-law to bring her to his ready room, along with his other siblings and father. When my mother-in-law walked in and tried to hug him, Bucky stopped her. He asked what she was wearing, and when she dismissed it, he repeated the question differently, why was she wearing white at his wedding? Why was she trying to hurt his soon-to-be wife? Why was she trying to ruin his wedding day? I think phrasing it as his day rather than my day got to his mother. He reminded her that it was his wedding too. She still tried to dismiss it, saying he was overreacting and it was just a dress. That's when he lost it. He started yelling at his mother, saying that he now realized I wasn't misunderstanding her, she was deliberately being hurtful to me. He yelled that he had been defending her to me all this time, but now it was clear that I was the one who needed defending. He accused his mother of trying to sabotage his relationship. When my father-in-law tried to say something, Bucky shut him down, saying he didn't want to hear it because they had stood by and enabled her behavior. Bucky then told his mother, because you're my mother, I'm willing to postpone the wedding by half an hour to give you a chance to change. I don't care if you go home to a store or wherever. Just leave now and only come back when you've changed. If you refuse, you will never see me, my wife, or our future children ever again. Do I make myself clear? The wedding was perfect and my mother-in-law wore a blue dress. I don't know how to thank this man enough. His birthday is in three months and I'm going to have to plan something extra special. Update. It has been two months since my last post. I didn't expect I would need to update, but here we are. I've made plans for his birthday. We're going to Las Vegas that weekend and I've already made reservations at Gordon Ramsay's Hell's Kitchen. He knows I've made plans for us that weekend, but he doesn't know what they are. Now for the update, we are going no contact with his mother and low contact with his father. Sharon, my sister-in-law, has moved out. She's currently staying with a friend, about a 20-minute walk from us. The reason for all of this? In the weeks after the wedding, Pamela was cordial. She wasn't overly nice, but she also wasn't mean or hurtful. Until three weeks ago, we were invited to a family get-together and everyone was asked to bring something. My college roommate is from South America and taught me how to make a rum cake from her country. It's called Viado. It takes hours to make. Bucky spent that time with me in the kitchen, talking, pouring wine for me, and taste testing the rum. He was there to see how much time and effort went into making the cake. At the get-together, everything was going fine until Bucky mentioned that he was offered a job that would require us to move out of state. We haven't made a decision yet because we wanted to find out what that would mean for my work. Can I transfer? Can I work remotely? Do I need to look for another job? While the offer was on the table, we hadn't decided yet. When Pamela heard this, she lost it. She threw a tantrum, accusing me of taking away her only baby boy. She was yelling at me, and I was too stunned to react. Bucky tried to calm her down, but she wouldn't have it. In her tantrum, she walked over to the table, grabbed my cake, and threw it on the ground. I don't know what happened then. All I remember is falling to my knees, repeating to myself, it's just a cake, it's just a cake. I was thinking about all the time and energy I put into making it. I called my old roommate for a refresher on the recipe. I had to find a specialty shop for that specific sugar-based rum. I spent hours in the kitchen baking and she just threw it on the floor. I could hear my husband yelling. I couldn't make out what he was saying, but I've never heard him sound so angry. After a while, Bucky walked over, helped me up, and we left. On our way home, he kept telling me that it would be okay and that we were never going back there again. At home, once we had both calmed down, we talked about it. 
I didn't even have to suggest going no contact, Bucky said he had already told his mother that we would be going no contact and that we would only resume contact if I changed my mind. We took out our phones and blocked Pamela. Bucky called his father, asked to be put on speaker, and told them that Pamela is not welcome in our house and that we are going no contact, possibly permanently. This means we won't be attending any family gatherings if his mother is present. Pamela tried to say something but Bucky hung up. We haven't made a decision yet, but now we have one more reason to accept the job offer and move. Final update. It's not the ending any of us wanted, but that's how life went. No, Bucky and I are not divorcing. We still love each other, our marriage is still strong, and we have no reason to leave one another. Before I tell you how it ended, let's go back over what happened in the last few months. Going no contact is sometimes easier said than done, especially if the other person doesn't agree with it. Pamela wanted to see her son again, and in her mind, if she forced him, he would eventually see things her way. So while we went no contact, Pamela went full contact, pun intended. She got a new number and started texting Bucky. Since his phone is on silent during meetings he only noticed afterward. There were already 20 texts. The text started with apologies, saying she was sorry for what she did, but that we were overreacting. She insisted we're family and family can work things out. Then, as he didn't respond, her messages became angrier. He blocked that number and she got a new one. After a week, he had enough and called his father to talk to Pamela. He put her on speaker so I could listen but asked me to stay quiet. Bucky talked to his mother and told her that we were going no contact because of her behavior towards me, his wife, and that her current behavior wasn't helping her case. She asked for how long and Bucky told her we would resume contact when I changed my mind. That's when Pamela really screwed herself over. She said, that slur for black people, slur for Chinese people, will never be fair. I'm mixed African American and Chinese. I audibly gasped when she said that. Pamela must have heard it because she asked if I was there. Bucky looked at me and I knew what he was thinking. I nodded to him. We had just made our decision. Ignoring her question, Bucky said we've decided. I'm taking the job offer and we are moving far away from you. With that he hung up. I don't believe Pamela is racist. I believe she made a racist remark in the heat of the moment. But it was enough to push us over the edge. The next weeks went fast, Bucky confirmed he would take the new job, he resigned his old job. I arranged to work remotely. In a few months my workplace is opening a satellite office here, I'm already on the transfer list. In a month time we moved to our new city. The next two months we did not hear anything from Pamela. Two weeks ago we got a phone call from my father-in-law. Pamela was involved in a fatal car accident. The investigation is still ongoing, so all we know is that she was on the highway and there was a multiple car pileup. There were multiple casualties, including Pamela. We just came back from the funeral. Even if we were no contact, this was still Bucky's mother. This is not what any of us wanted. We were still hoping that someday we could reconcile. But life had other plans, 